Good morning. It's Monday the 18th of May, just before eight o'clock, and I'm at East Hall Farm, just north of Whitwell. The men are about to gather for their weekly meeting, Monday morning meeting, at which they discuss all the activities for the week ahead, discuss what needs doing, what priorities lie ahead, what, what other jobs are required. Following that, I'm then planning to visit several farms through the day to capture what they're up to, so we get a snapshot of what farmers do on a day-to-day -day basis. And quite a few of them have very kindly agreed to let me in. So, enjoy the day ahead. o'clock in the morning at East Hall Farm and the regular Monday morning meeting is underway. It's good to see that everyone is social distancing as they discuss the jobs that need doing to a background of moos from the cows nearby. Next I called in to see Mick, the stockman at East Hall Farm who had a busy morning sorting out the cows and the bulls. The bulls had to come out of their existing field, temporarily into the shed. The cows then came out of their field, moved to where the bulls were, and the bulls came out of the shed and moved to where the cows were. Some of them make a fuss about being moved. <coughs> Eventually, they get the bulls out of the field and put them in the shed where they'll wait while the cows swap places. There are about 150 suckler cows in the herd and each one of them has a calf running at foot. All the calves were born from mid-March onwards with the last one born only a couple of weeks ago and they're all hungry and keen to move to new grazing. And with the last of the cows safely heading towards their own field it's time to get the bulls back out of the shed and put them in the cow's original field. As I left East Hall, I stopped off to see David and Michael Hill, who were both busy preparing the ground ready for the maize that was going in as a game cover crop. You can see how dry the land is too, the clouds of dust rising up behind the machines, a sure sign of the very little rain we've had during May. Currently following Joe Cole's daughter, Chloe, who's off to spread fertiliser onto a crop. I happened to see her driving along on the road and I flagged her down and asked if I could film her and she very kindly said yes. So we're spreading nitrate, spreading at 220 kilos a hectare. We're going to drill um, game 
cover, which is May's tomorrow. It will stay over winter till, well, the game season runs from the November to February, where we'll obviously beat the birds through it to shoot them. <laughs> And so I left Chloe to her fertiliser spreading and headed for Will Dickinson's farm, stopping along the way to see Hertfordshire's other food producers, these bees loving the sunshine. Will was busy unloading fertiliser when I arrived. And he took some time out to tell me what he was up to. Today we're just spreading a little bit of uh, ammonium nitrate, which is fertiliser that uh, is a critical component for um, wheat to grow to make the best bread that you can eat. Will's son Fred was doing the spreading and I caught up with him briefly just outside Wheatumstead as he pulled into a field. Fertiliser is a key component of many conventional crops and the fertiliser spreader is very carefully calibrated so that it spreads exactly the right amount in the right parts of the field. I left Fred spreading his fertiliser and I headed over to Great Gadsden where I was due to meet Jeff Sims and his huge 6,000 litre, 36 metre sprayer. Jeff jumped down from the cab and explained to me what he was up to. Good afternoon, uh, my name is Jeff Sims. I'm a farmer and contractor from uh, between St Albans and Redbourne in Hertfordshire. And today it's a lovely day for spraying. So this is my crop sprayer. Um, I've just finished spraying uh, at one farm, a crop of spring wheat uh, for weed control. It's not been the best of seasons for farmers this year, but uh, the weeds seem to be thriving in these conditions at the moment, uh, which is a bit of a shame. So yeah, we're, we're busy controlling weeds and I've just arrived at this farm here to spray two crops here, winter barley and spring barley. They both need a little bit of weed control. Uh, they need a little bit of uh, what we call growth regulator. So that encourages certain parts of the plant to grow and not others. Um, and also a bit of fungicide to keep the leaves clean and photosynthesizing, uh, making the most of this sunshine. So, as I left Jeff to his spraying, I headed over to Harpenden, where NFU Vice President Stuart Roberts took time out from his busy schedule to show me what was going on at his organic arable and beef farm. One of the things with, uh, with organic farming, uh, which we are here at Hammond's End, is, uh, is weed control. So clearly we can't use lots of chemicals that other people have got access to, so we have to physically uh, try and destroy the weeds. So this is a field here uh, which will be going into clover later in the year for its nitrogen fixing properties uh, but we're just moving the ground a bit over the summer try and pull the weeds up let them dry out on the surface which they're doing well uh, in this dry weather um, and then uh, we'll probably leave it a good few weeks again dry it out uh, pull a few more weeds up and hopefully by the time we come to drill the clover uh, it'll be a fairly sterile seed bed uh, we should get a good crop of clover uh, after which by the time that's fixed some nitrogen and we've probably grazed a few sheep out here uh, we'll grow a fantastic crop of wheat or some oats uh, which you can see in the fields neighbouring this one. My last stop of the day was to my own farm at Wheatumstead, where I rent some land and keep two groups of cattle. I practice something called mob grazing, which means giving the cattle fresh pasture every day. A quick move of the water trough, and then it was over to the second group to move them too. This group includes some in calf Hereford heifers, some year old growing Sussex cattle, and some Jersey calves that were born last autumn. Water is essential for cattle, and so I've bought this handy little micro trough, which has a spike on the bottom. Just stick it in the ground, 
if I can do it, test that the water is flowing, and we're away. Happy path. And so ends a day in the life of Hertfordshire farmers. Hope you enjoyed it. Mm-hmm.